Welcome to School 2020. In this video, we will discuss about the other three kingdoms and binomial nomenclature. So first, we got fungi. In the last video, we have discussed about protista. Now we will talk about fungi. It is in Kingdom 3. So fungi most are terrestrial, saprophytic or parasitic. What is terrestrial? That grows on land. Saprophytic. Saprophytic means the organisms those get nourishment from dead organism or decaying materials. And parasitic means the organism lives in and on an organism and take nutrition from the host organism. Body is constituted of a single cell or mycelium. Mycelium is a narrow tape-like part. And they have well-organized nucleus. Cell wall is composed of chitin. Mode of nutrition is absorption. Chloroplast is absent. That means they cannot be they cannot produce food through photosynthesis. That's why they are parasitic and takes nutrition from the host organism. They reproduce through reproduce by haploid spores and their cells divide through mitosis. For example, yeast. And in the picture there is a figure of fungi. Then we have Kingdom 4 Plantae. Photosynthetic and eukaryotic. Photosynthetic that means they have chlorophylls in their cells. In their uh, they have plastids in their cells and that's why they can produce their own food as they are photosynthetic and eukaryotic that means well developed nucleus advanced tissue systems are found in them mostly terrestrial but there are also many aquatic species in this kingdom they are mostly terrestrial but aquatic species are also present in this kingdom they develop Embryos and diploid state starts from it. Their sexual reproduction is anisogamous. They are archegoniates and flowering plants. Example, advanced green plants. Then we have Kingdom 5, Animalia. Eukaryotic and multicellular. They are multicellular and well developed. As there are no cell walls, vacuoles, and plastids in them, they are heterotrophs. Their cells do not have non living cell walls, plastids, or vacuoles in them. Because of there are no plastid in their cells, they are called heterotrophs, and so they depend on other organisms for their food. What do you mean by heterotrophs? Organism, the organism deriving its nutritional requirements from complex organic substances is known as a heterotroph organism. They have advanced and complex tissue systems. After ingestion, they digest their food. They produce through sexual reproduction. And one special thing about them is their heart is four chambered. An example the entire invertebrate and vertebrate animals except protozoans. Now we will know about binomial nomenclature. What is binomial nomenclature? The system of Scientific naming of an organism is known as binomial nomenclature.
The scientific name of an organism has two parts. The first part of the name denotes the genus and to which the species belongs. The second part identifies the species within the genus. The aim of binomial nomenclature is to unambiguously identify every organism. The scientific naming of an organism should be accorded with the declared principles of ICBN and ICZN. The abbreviation for ICBN is International Code of Botanical Nomenclature and the abbreviation for ICZN is International Code of Zoological Nomenclature. And Carolus Linnaeus is the father of binomial nomenclature and the parts of taxonomic rank of human being is like this from at first there is kingdom then phylum then class then order then family then genus then species and we can say animals chordates animals that means organisms able to move on their own Chordates, animals with a backbone, mammals, chordates with fur or hair and milk glands, primates, mammals with collar bones and grasping fingers, hominids, primates and relatively flat faces and three-dimensional vision, homo, hominids with upright posture and large brain, homo sapiens, members of the genus homo with a height for height and thin skull bones. Then we are about to know the rules of binomial nomenclature. As it is said that the scientific naming of a plant or an animal should be accorded with the declared principles of ICBN and ICZN respectively so we have to know the rules so these are some basic rules the first one is the language of scientific naming would be latin number two should have two parts first part is genus and the second part is species number three should have to be unique number four the first alphabet would be in capital letter and the rest will be in small type including the species number five should be written in italics and if handwritten then its two parts should be separately underlined and the last of all is an example which is homo sapiens the scientific name is composed of two parts the genus name and the species name since two names are used, we call it binomial nomenclature system. Now we will know the advantages of binomial nomenclature. Number one, binomial names are universal names for plants and animals. Number two, definite and precise names. Number three, describes the main features of the plant or organism. Number four, Greek and Latin names are internationally known. Number five, easy to arrange plants based on their systematic relationships. If you like our videos, please share with your friends and don't forget to subscribe our channel.